partner on how does these energy revitalizing technologies work on something like tritium and MTBE? Manfred, do you want to start with that? I have no clue. Uh, I have to say that frankly because I've never tried it. I've tried it with a lot of substances, but I have never tried it with radioactivity. So that's just like John Evans said, we got to go there into some experiments and then we will find out. It's kind of like the next oh. frontier, it sounds like. <laughs> uh, could I put a, a little word in? As Please do. Pollution? I want you all to put your words in. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'd like to do a lot and lots of research in every department as far as pollution, human health, you name it. Anyway, I have been working, and maybe somebody knows about a doctor, Carl Oppenheimer. He has invented a bacteria. Well, it's kind of odd when you say invented a bacteria. Well, it's just one of the <laughs> oldest forms of bacteria. It doesn't have a DNA. It has an RNA, so therefore it always duplicates itself exactly. Now, this bacteria can just about eat anything. Uh, if you remember the Exxon Valdez spill. Yes. And they started putting bacteria down to start eating the hydrocarbons. Well, that was a, a primitive form back in those days. But now, Dr. Carl Oppenheimer, who actually talked with the United Nations, and his uh, bacteria is safe and everything, WTO, you know, acknowledges that it's all safe. And he goes all over the world with all where there's big, uh, you know, chemical or, or uh, oil spills or whatever. And he has this bacteria that he puts down and cleans up everything. So there's one solution right there. Boy, this would be great to clean up the governments that are operating oh. uh, inappropriately. Should we should we get some of this RNA? I think we would, <laughs> we'll have a third party. It'll be the RNA. <laughs> Please go ahead, sir. Go ahead. So uh, you know, this is a, a great jump forward. And so I'll tell you what we've done. An associate of his and myself, and I'm working with him. We did some experiments in China with this, with their pollution and, you know, uh, recycling projects over there, and also helping out the farmers on, ooh, a lot of acreage. They were so impressed, they immediately gave him an import license. So uh, by next year, the Chinese government uh, has asked us to go in so that we could do a recycling uh, project. That's with wastewater, you know, anything with composting, and the whole works. So uh, people are listening around the world, and as soon as the Chinese did that, the Philippines also uh, invited us in too. So um, there is great prospects ahead, and of course, with that, and also with the revitalized water, the combination with both of them, with agriculture, human health, you name it, it's, it's going to have a profound effect. Well, I'm very appreciative that all of you have come to the show today. We have a few minutes left. And is there somebody here? Was that Bill? This is Bill Cox. Hello, Bill Cox. Uh, Welcome, Bill Cox from Primary Water Associates. Good morning. I would like to just put in a word in regard to this. Uh, I've been working with about 125-year-old validated, well-documented science called Primary New Water. This is new water which is created above the magma as superheated steam and finds its way through fractured rock to the surface or near the surface of the earth. And as a dowser, that's what I do. I try to locate it where it's affordable to drill to get this water. And it's pure water coming up. So it doesn't have to be treated unless it comes through a contaminated formation. But generally speaking, primary water itself is new water and clear water. So we're not talking about water treatment when we can bring that up. And this could solve a lot of the world's water pollution problems. This is water that does not come from rainfall. That's right. It, it comes anti-gravitative to the surface under a superheated steam pressure from below above the magma. Bill, uh, this is Paul Bratch. I had a question for you. Sure. Because uh, a lot of the different bottled waters that are being talked about, you know, they tend to pull out what seems to be only the good things in the water and of course you know the ground doesn't know the difference between calcium and magnesium and mercury and lead and, and fluoride yeah. um, so when you're pulling a water like you're talking about out of the ground a 
pure water now is that devoid of the minerals and the natural inherent things in the earth and if it isn't then how do you separate the things that are in the ground that are harmful from the things that are not because a lot of times the it's natural gets thrown around in the public and i say well volcanic eruptions and tidal waves and earthquakes are natural as well but you wouldn't want to get in their way well with good engineering someone who understands what's going on with primary water they can engineer the well so that if there are pollutants coming in i'm talking about mineral pollutants that come into the well from fractured rock below then they can shield out pour cement down in the hole and re-drill through it and block out those formations and that is part of the science not only of locating it but also the completion of the well and bringing it to the surface in its purest form ladies and gentlemen you have been listening to it's rainmaking time we are coming to the close of this segment on water composition and frequency we want to thank Mikhail Lund, Paul Baraccia, Bill Cox, John Evans, and Manfred Bauer for being here. You're fantastic stewards. The world needs you. We're excited you've met today. And when we say it's rainmaking time, we mean it's rainmaking time.